and good morning. And it's a beautiful one. Uh, six inches of snow out there for us. And Bobby O'Hearn is not with us this morning. He's out. He actually plowed us out this morning. Now he's doing the rest of the plow. Miss Amanda. So I am going to be Bobby O'Hearn. Uh, we are calling upon people uh, who, you, you can be seated by the way. Uh, we call upon people this year who are working outside of the church for the good of the community. And uh, Bobby is the uh, fire chief in Sunderland. And so he would have been here today if it wasn't for the storm and for his plowing. So if you do have a song sheet, we are going to begin uh, with the lighting of the Advent wreath, the third, the first three candles, and then we'll get to the pink one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved, let us live in this world with temperance, justice, and piety. Heaven and earth will pass away. What you foretold shall be accomplished. You will come to judge the living and the dead. You will reward everyone according to the gifts and the deeds. Keep us from being engulfed in worldly desires. Let your power be known, O Lord. Come and let your face shine upon us. And again, on behalf of Robert O'Hearn, the uh, fire chief in Sunderland, I'll be right, lighting the three candles due to the, uh, the snow that we received last night. Most merciful God, have mercy on me. 
Forgive me and guard me in thy sins. I resolve to amend my life, improve and sanctify, that I may become worthy to serve you faithfully all the days of my life. I beseech you to bless Mother Mary, all our saints, and you, my brothers and sisters. Pray to the Lord, our God, for me. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and by his authority best unity, me, I absolve you from your sins, in the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show, Show us, O Lord, your mercy. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. And our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Let us pray. Take away from us our iniquities, we beseech you, O Lord, that pure hearts may enter into the tabernacle of the Holy of Holies, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Awake and sing, you who lie in the dust, for your dew is a dew of light, and the land of shade gives birth. The will ever Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it was now, and shall be Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Father, we joyfully approach the celebration of your Son's birth. May he bring us pardon and freedom from the burden of our sin. We ask through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The lesson prescribed by the Church for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly, and rejoice with soft joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands, and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Here ends the lesson prescribed by the Church for this morning's Holy Mass. Amen. Happy are those whose help is Jacob's God, whose hope is the Lord's God, the maker of heaven and earth, the seas, and all of its in them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord come. Hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, cleanse the lips of the prophet I say with a burning coal. Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one to come, or should we look for another? And Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and what you see. The blind regain their sight, 
the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And John, blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. And as they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and even more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of God is even greater than he. By the words of this holy gospel, may our sins be forgiven. Gospel reading. 
John is raving out in the desert. In his words, you brood of vipers, and that's to the people that are coming to him seeking repentance. So can you imagine what he's thinking about the ones who don't even bother? You brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. Even now the axe lies at the root of the tree, and the one who is coming after me, his winnowing fan is in his hand, the chaff, that means everybody who's not out there in the desert, all those other people in the world, the chaff, he will burn with an unquenchable fire. And then comes Jesus, who is any but this fire, harbinger of doom. Jesus, as he says in today's, in response to John's question today, he says, he gives sight to the blind. He helps the lame to walk. He cures those who are suffering from leprosy. He lets the deaf hear, and he proclaims the good news to the poor. The good news, not this fiery message of destruction, but the gospel, the good news. John was expecting someone to further what he had begun. He was waiting for a vengeful God to make his presence known in a powerful way. He was waiting for vindication. He was hoping that a sinful world and an unfaithful people would face their time of judgment. And then comes Jesus, who saw it himself, and also his message of deliverance that he offered more in line with the joyous prophecy of Isaiah that was also read today by Chris. The desert and the parched land, they will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with an abundance of flowers and rejoice with joyful song. Say to those who heart, whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not, here is your God. And those whom the Lord has ransomed, they will return and enter Zion's city, crowned with everlasting joy. That's the idea that Jesus came into the world with, that he was bringing joy in the presence of God to people who were in the darkness and are now coming to the light. It's almost the exact opposite of John's message about you're going to get it because you're sinful. And this contradiction is the reason for John's question. He's not doubting all of the wonders that are accomplished by Jesus. Matter of fact, he sees them and he believes in them. His doubting is that, is this really the way of God? John was expecting someone quite different than Jesus. And this is why Jesus' last words and answer to John's questions of, are you the one? Are simply, and blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. John, don't take offense at me. We're never told John's reaction to this answer. We don't know if he came, became a believer. We don't know if he died still wanting a vengeful God. We don't know how he died. And this takes us back again to the Advent wreath in those words. The message of the shepherd's candle, that pink one that we just like lit today, proclaims to us to keep our eyes open. Advent is about getting ourselves prepared not to see what we think Christmas is all about, but what God would have us see. It's not about our preferences for stuff. It's about God's revelation that a child is coming into the world in humility and need and poverty, and he's coming with great hope and love, and that is the reason for the season. But look all around us. People are forcing Christmas to be what they want it to be, even to the point where Jesus sometimes has very little or even nothing to do with the celebration. All kinds of people who don't even know the first thing about Christ are celebrating Christ's Mass. This is the exact same story as John. This is why we need to remember John the Baptist. He is Advent's reminder to keep our eyes open. Advent is the chance to let our spiritual eyes adjust to the increasing light as we approach closer and closer to the mystery of his birth. It's our time to prepare to see what Jesus would have us see. And John the Baptist stands in this season as a perfect example for all of us. He was certain that he knew what he was looking for. That is, until he met Jesus. He prepared the way for Jesus by getting people to start rethinking their faith, but then he himself was forced to reinterpret his own faith and his own message because who are you, Jesus? Are you the one who is to come? Are we, should, are we to wait for another? He had to reinterpret his own faith. Approaching Jesus with this same kind of openness, that's the heart of the message of Advent. Jesus surprised and shocked John. Let him surprise and even shock us too. Jesus made John think again about the nature and the power of God. Christmas should always do the same for us if we really believe in a God who came into our world not in royal power, not in the strength of a soldier,
but in need and humility. John's God is a God of judgment, and that is the one we often hear about. Turn on the television someday, listen to some of the evangelists, and hear that message about God is going to come, God is going to strike them dead, God is going to get them. But it's not the God that Jesus shows us of joy. So let us pray the prayer of the shepherd's candle, that we keep our eyes open so that the joy of Christmas may really be ours, we may really pay attention and see what Christmas is about from God's eyes and not from our own. And for this we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Almighty Lord, on this day of our first real snowstorm of the season, we also pray for all of those who are traveling. We pray for safe journeys for all of them. We also pray in memory at this time for Victoria Andres, who passed away on December 17th of 1993. It's offered by Pat and Bob Blakesley. We continue to offer our prayers for John Savage, who is battling cancer. It's offered by Joe and Peg Kostia. We continue to offer our prayers for Marshall Aaronstan, also, battling cancer is offered by his friends here at Holy Name. We continue to offer prayers for my friend, Dr. Jay Sullivan, and also my friend, Susan Zarechak, both of whom are also battling cancer. We offer our prayers for the health and strength of you, Hubbard, is offered by the Hubbard family. We continue to offer our prayers for the strength and comfort of your Dan and Dan Cronin, and also the continued health and strength of their baby, Elizabeth, is offered by the Karski family. We offer a prayer for Kathy Guy, who died unexpectedly this past Thursday. Is offered by Joe and Ted Kuschen. And we also offer a prayer for my cousin, Judy O'Brien, who has recently been diagnosed with cancer. And is now going through an extremely uh, severe form of uh, radiation and chemotherapy to treat it. We pray for strength that uh, she may endure the treatments and the treatments may be successful. We also ask the Lord to hear all the private prayers that we bring before you. We ask you to bless each and every one of us who are gathered and be with all of those who are here, who this day, especially because of the weather, are unable to be with us. And all these things we say, we pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, he is now and he shall be the Lord of our Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, who begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again and fulfilled the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have the life. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeds with the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism to the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of 
judge and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you.
we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. <coughs> holy, 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 Lord God, We therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Most humbly beseech you to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which our holy church receives from you. We implore you to defend and guide you throughout the world, together with your priests and all true believers of the holy faith. Remember, O Lord, your servants and your hand. salvation. 
these gifts we receive from the joyful countenance as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts and with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls the same forever we humbly beseech you almighty god command that our prayers be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar before the countenance of your divine majesty that as many of us as receive the salt of the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be mindful also, Lord, of your servants and handmaidens, all who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and who have passed on to eternity.
Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity according to your will, who lives and reigns, God, world without end. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who according to the will of the Father, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, has by your death revived the world, deliver me by this your most sacred body and blood, from all my iniquities and from every evil, and grant that I may always fulfill your holy will, who lives and reigns for all ages. Amen. Partaking of your body, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I, all unworthy, dare to receive, may it not serve as a judgment, but through your mercy may become a defense of my soul and body and a desired remedy. May the sacrament of union with you, Jesus Christ, my Master and Savior, awaken in me living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. May it make me a willing and zealous servant toward fulfilling God's purpose on earth. And may the last tonight be entirely with you, Christ and God, in eternity. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Peace and the blessings of God, the house of the Spirit, the Son of
the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, without him. Not one thing came into being. The past come into being, and him was light. And the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. He came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or the will of flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word of God became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glories of the Father's only Son, full of grace and of truth. Thanks be to God.